Hi everyone, welcome to Play Hokey with me. My name is Roz. I hope everyone's doing well today. I'm getting ready to join some squares to a blanket that I'm working on and I thought it would be a good time to share with you one of my favorite joining methods and that is the invisible seam or the invisible join. Here is a previous blanket that I used that on and as you can see the seam is virtually invisible. Uh, the yarn that you use is camouflaged really well with this method and I find that perfect when I'm working with a lot of colors. The other reason I like this one so much is because it's a very flat seam and uh, you know oftentimes when you do a join you'll have a bit of a ridge and this with this way you won't get that you'll have a very flat uh, join which will look great on both sides of your blanket. Let me see if I can show you on this one. As you can see there's a seam happening here and then it's on the other side it's flat as well. Okay so let's go ahead and get started. I think you're going to enjoy this just as much as I do once you get the hang of it. Okay so I'm ready to join two squares together and what I like to do is I make sure I have plenty of yarn to go through my pieces. I usually do about two and a half to three times the length of these squares but if you're working on a very long piece just make sure that it is going to uh, go through your pieces that you're working on and you can always do a knot to continue your yarn. I have a link to my magic knot that I just oh I simply love this because it's a really tiny knot and it does not come apart. That's in the description box below if you're interested in that. But for this I want to show you two different ways that you can go about doing this. You can work either flatly on a surface, you can just make your seam right on the table, or you can sandwich your pieces together and work upright like so. Uh, for this demonstration I'll try to do both for you. Okay so the key to this method is very simple. You just want to make sure that you're getting in between your chain stitches on both sides. That is the key you, because this is what is going to camouflage your yarn that you're putting through. If you can stay in the middle of these chain spaces you should be good to go. Now it's not a perfect method because sometimes you have looser stitches and you may see a little bit come through but don't let that you know stress you out too much because it's it's okay. It is definitely okay and when you're all finished for the most part you won't see these see these stitches. Okay so what I like to do is I like to start in the corners and I find the corresponding center chains on both. I don't usually get this exactly right and that is totally fine because you can go back later and even it up since you have your long piece of yarn. Now later on as you start working your other chains you do want to get as close as possible matching that up. So really pay attention when you get to that phase. Let's get into that middle. Why don't you want to go in there? Why don't you want to go in there? Okay, finicky today. All right, so we're on the go. I like to fiddle and kind of count as I go along. Make sure your chains are facing you. And now we're just going to scissor back and forth. You want to feel a little bit of resistance when you're doing this. This lets you know that you're getting into the fibers of the centers of your stitches. If it feels like it's going in very easily then you probably haven't gotten quite into that center. But again it's okay if you miss it a couple of times. There we go. I hope you can see this going right into the center. Yeah that one's going to probably show through a little bit but I'll leave it alone so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go and you just keep going back and forth, back and forth. You will get very fast with this. Trying to do it on camera slows, you, slows me down a little bit but 
you will find this very easy and you'll get a rhythm with this and get through super fast. But can you see there's times where I'm really trying to find some fibers in there to get into. You don't want a very blunt darning needle for this. You want with, with a little bit of a point to help you with that. Let's go ahead and stop there and pull. Okay. Let's see what we're looking like. We're looking really good. Okay, like I said, I knew that one was going to show, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that, and neither should you. Everything's lining up well. I'll probably go in here and add a little stitch there to make sure that it's even, Stevens. But here, let me show you how the flat surface method would look. Let's see if we can get a little closer. There we go. I hope you can see. So you're going to do the same exact thing. Look for your chains. There are the chains there and here. And where did I leave off? I was on the opposite side. So now I'm going to go in to that stitch and continue doing what we were doing making sure I find my chains. Until we get to the end. There, yeah, that felt good. You will definitely get a feel of what it should feel like. Where are we? We want that to match up. So we're going to go into that chain. This table surface is slipping and sliding, so please bear with me. I hope you can get the idea, though. And we're going to go in there. One more to get into that corner. We should be good to go. Okay. And like I said, I'm not satisfied with this side. So what I will do off camera is I will just take this with a needle and go into that chain there and we will be straight. Give it a little tug and you are joined. So the burning question with this is how do you handle corners, right? And I really don't have a fancy or specific tip for you on this. I think once you start playing with it, you'll find your own natural uh, way of doing it. I can show you what I do. Uh, for example, I still have plenty of this uh, sort of lavender color arm on my needle. So I would continue on with my next square while I have it going. And I would just do the same thing here. Uh, I would go in to, I started, I finished right here in my square here, I would go across and go into my middle stitch. It's kind of slippery on here. And then continue down uh, going into the middle sections of my chains and making sure everything is staying tight. Okay, so I would just continue on from that side. This side, I would do the same thing, but I would make sure to probably just to give extra security. I would probably, as I'm working on this side, I would just go into these again and work through just to give a really secure fit. Let me show you what I mean. Let's zoom in. I want to connect to all of these to make sure that I am really secure. So I'm just going to do a circle around and I'll do it flat so you can see it like this. Let's see, where did I finish there? So I'm going to go into the middle of the one above me. I'm going to move across and I'm going to go into the middle, as always, just into the middle of the chain. 
and I'm going to go into the green one as well. And as always, trying to feel for a little bit of tension to make sure that I'm getting into the middle of the fibers. Okay. And now I'm going to continue on with my light purple as I was. And I sometimes I backtrack, sometimes I repeat in the same chain stitch to make sure that I am staying lined up. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be okay to do that. And I'm looking good. So I am going to repeat there. And continue on and then I just continue moving down the entire length of my squares. Give a tug. Let me show you one that's finished to show you. Hold on, let's zoom back out. Let's find a corner. That's a, no, that's a fuzz. Okay, I was going to say that's a messy corner, but that was just fuzz and somewhere that I need to snip. Oh well. Um, as you can see, here's a corner and you can't really see the color changes happening. You can't even really tell which color I was using to do this seam. So that gives you a clear indication there that it works. So I think that's about it. I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed this method of joining. Uh, like I said, it just takes a little bit of practice. It takes some uh, time to get the feel of what the stitching, what it should feel like, the little resistance that you'll feel. But just remember to stay in the middle of your chains and you should be good to go. Thanks a lot everyone. Happy hooking and talk to you soon. Bye.